Now that we saw how to configure the phone and see the status using the keypad on the phone itself, we're going to do it remotely using the web GUI. I reset the phone back to factory defaults. I'm now using a DCP address again. In this case, it's 172.16.201.5, and that's what I'm going to be typing into the web browser, 172.16.201.5. Again, being very, very important that you watch what the IP address is on the phone, especially this part for you doing it remote administration to make sure that you're configuring your phone and not somebody else's by mistake. You'll come up with the password screen. The default password is admin, and we're going to keep it that way so we can make sure we can always get into these devices. And it just brings up to uh, a multi-menued screen. The first screen comes up to status. These accounts will make more sense once we work with um, a PBX or working with a server. But just like we looked before about this, the network status and the system information, I can click on the network status over here, and it tells me all this information. It tells me that I'm getting my IP address via DHCP, gives me my MAC address, and this is all my IP information, my IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and my DNS servers. If I want to find out the program information, I can click on the system information, and it's going to be showing me all the same information as I saw using the phone, but now in a web browser. The most important part of this um, version number, again, is this program version, equivalent to an operating system. Anytime you're looking at for firmware updates or, or you know, what the version number is, it's always going to be based on this program software version. In this case, this has been updated to 1.0.5.58. To configure this machine, if I wanted to you know, give this a static IP address to the same thing as I did before using the keypad, I'd go into the networking section, network section, and I click on basic settings. Basic settings is going to give me the option to use DHCP or to statically configure the device as the following information. It looks as if there's an information already entered in here, and that's the defaults based on a private network. This is not what this phone is getting at this point. It's done through DHCP. Um, this only takes a f this, these numbers down here only take effect when you're statically configuring them as, and you tell it what it's going to be. I'm going to be changing these addresses and making it the same as it did before. So 172.16.207.100. And making the subnet mask 255.255.240.0. The default gateway is 172.16.192.1. And our DNS servers for school are 172.16.16.140 and 172.16.160.0.0. Um, that's all that we need to configure on this page. So I can click Save and Apply. Unlike the keypad version where I, as soon as I exit the menu, it told me that I had to reboot, this doesn't tell me that I have to reboot. So you just have to know that anytime you make any IP address changes, that you do have to reboot the phone. You can do it through the phone physically, but we're going to try to do everything remotely right here. And we do that by the reboot button up on top. So if you're looking, this is still has my old IP address, 201.5. I'm going to click reboot in the web browser. And it's going to send a reboot request to the phone, and then it's going to reboot. Once the phone reboots, you can see on the screen that it's 172.16.207.100. Your web browser may still say that the phone is rebooting. That's because it's still pointed to an old IP address. This doesn't know that it's been changed. So I can type up here, 207.100. Now I should be able to log into the phone using the new IP address. The ad ad password is still admin. To check out the status of the network, I can click on Network Status under the Status menu. And I can see now that I am using a static IP address. And this is the information, 172.16.207.100, and the rest of the IP configuration down here. There's other th settings that we may want to work with here as well. Many of these are capable of being done through the keypad and the menus on there, but sometimes just having a graphical user interface, seeing a screen, being able to type with a full keyboard instead of just using the um, number pad, the keypad on the phone can be advantageous. So I can go up to settings, and we're not going to take a look at all of these. Um, 
let me take a look at the date and time. Right now on my phone, the date and time format is uh, 2014-03-25. Um, Maybe I want to change that instead of being year, month, date to make it month, day, year. This is one of those things that when you do save and apply, it does take effect right away. So on the phone, you can see that it switched to um, 325-2014 already. It does automatically pick up your time zone, at least it should. If you need to change this, you can click on the time zone area and we want to choose GMT minus six for central, central time. And then we can click save and apply again. Another area that we could look at is under the web service. Built into the phone, if I click on the switch screen button on here, you can see that it brings up weather for Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And if I click it again, there's some currency exchange. I click switch screen again, it brings me back to the main menu. These web services, um, some built-in applications um, that you can actually change and modify. So right now, it sees our internet connection coming through Manitowoc. Well, that's not where we want to have the weather from. We want it to be for Cleveland, because that's where we are. So under the city code, instead of being automatic based on our internet presence, we're going to be using a self-defined city code. And it can just be the zip code. Our zip code for Cleveland is 53015. If we want to make sure this going to be in Fahrenheit, it seemed to pick up Fahrenheit automatically, but I'll, I can click that as well. Maybe I'm not interested in having the currency exchange rates shown, so I'm going to click No on there and click Save and Apply. After I do that, I go back to the phone, I click on switch screen, and now you can see that the weather is listed for Cleveland, Wisconsin. And I click switch screen and again, it brings me back to the main menu. One other area that we can configure is the firmware. Right now, we do see under status and system information, our current version is 1.0.5.58, which is current as of today. But say we want to always make sure that we are in the latest operating system with the latest fixes and patches. To do that, we can go to maintenance and go under upgrade and provisioning. When we click on upgrade and provisioning, there's an area here that says firmware server path. This is, um, it says right on the side, defines the server path for the, for the firmware server. It does default some information in here. This is not correct. We want to delete all of this so it's completely clear. And we type in firmware.grandstream, because that's the manufacturer of these phones. So firmware.grandstream.com. Up on top, it says it's going to firmware upgrade provisioning. It's always going to check for new firmware. So it's going to be checking it periodically. Definitely every time that you boot the phone, it's going to be looking for a new firmware. So make sure that we are up to date. After I make that change, I can click Save and Apply. And the next time I boot, it's going to go out. It's going to go check for new firmware. If there's new firmware, it's going to download and install it automatically. So that is how we can use the graphical um, user interface um, through a web browser of being able to um, get the status of our device by looking under status, network status, and system information, as well as doing some settings such as our network configuration and maybe some other settings that we want to work with. And those are the basics of using the web GUI.